right out of the gate, guys, we got to talk about some relatively powerful cars that are going to help this old, old, old archetype actually come into the new fray. I think that having a car that's a flying skill drain, having a car that's a search car that is basically a foolish goods target, having another car that's a new Nordic beast that can help you go into Thor a little bit easier, probably the worst normal summon, but definitely something that you have to pay attention to because it's another level three and it's, it's really, really easy to spam it out on the field and then it can help you to kick back cars back into your hand to be able to have a follow-up play. And then Avaldi is a really powerful car that can help you search each and every one of the new Nordic well, old Nordic cards, but this is a new Nordic card that you definitely got to take attention to. I put some of the cards like Metaphys and Thunder that would obviously mix well with the Link Monster being able to banish stuff from your hand. But I mean, I think Yassine really touched um, well on it. I actually saw his video um, late last night and then woke up and said, hey, I got to do my own. Getting into each of the cards, um, Loki actually takes a specific type of card, which is the All Fair cards, whatever the hell they're called. And obviously you got the other two take the other two types of setup cards, whether that be an ascendant or a beast in and of itself with Thor. As far as the deck, I really feel like it's not gonna be solved um, for a very long time. And then again, it's like a tier three, tier four deck anyway. So, I mean, everybody's kind of grasping the straws. Whenever you have a low tier deck, everybody's just kind of trying to figure it out the best way that they can. But I definitely think you have to have Mara for the Loki that's in your extra deck. Obviously, you don't know the lore that's in the Mar even in Marvel, you guys know about Odin and Thor and Loki and the brothers. And I'm sure you guys know all that, so I don't need to explain any of that. But as far as the descendant, it obviously goes hand in hand that the descendants the Nordic Beasts and the All Fairs all go into specific, different synchros that can help you facilitate plays. Now, obviously, cards like Hippo Carnival are extremely powerful in this deck because the Link needs to banish three cards, and a card like Hippo Carnival puts three cards onto the field, the tokens, rather easily. And then you can build from there and build up on your combos. As far as the actual spell card that I mentioned before, it allows you to special summon, although you will get locked into specific cards. And it is a foolish goods target, which is why I'm playing foolish goods in the deck. Obviously, you have cards like Eagle Booster to be help push through the Link 1 being able to resolve its effect. You need to resolve that effect. Therefore, you have to play a card like Eagle Booster or a Called by the Grave. You got to have Called by the Grave and obviously maybe Instant Fusion and some other cards because you have to push through the link. So if I were to change anything, put anything down in the side part that you definitely want to consider putting in the main deck by trimming a few cards down, I 100% recommend Called by the Grave. I 100% recommend Instant Fusion, Millennium Eyes Restrict to help you to be able to play because this deck is low tier and being able to play through hand traps is something that it probably can't do all too well if you can stop it it's really really easy to stop this deck with a veiler and this deck isn't that good going second either so obviously right out of the gate there's two major issues in and of itself with the deck with that being said um i just wanted to touch on um that each one of these again um odin takes a nordic ascendant and then obviously the other two, the one takes a beast and the other one, Thor takes beast. And last but not least, Loki takes the all fair card. So again, they're all set up in different ways. But the problem with these cards is they're not modernized. They're not powerful enough to stand up to modern cards like, let's say, Dragoon. Let's say other cards like the Destiny Hero Enforcer just coming out. There's new stuff coming out. There's really, really powerful cards that we already know about. There's interesting support cards that are being revealed here, but as far as understanding these things, we have to kind of break down piece by piece. Again, guys, as I said before, I kind of wanted to lay it out just so you could fully understand and then I can um, slap it in a little bit later as well. But cards that have beast in them can help you go into Thor. Cards that have Nordic all fair as the cards, um, not necessarily the green one, I'm thinking more about Mara, can help you go into Loki. And last but not least, the Odin, you need cards that say Descendant, because Odin, Descendant, I guess, I guess that's just how some of you can remember it, is Odin is their actual dad of Thor and Loki, in case you didn't know that. Again, you know, go watch um, Marvel, Avengers, or any of those movies, you'll figure it out. As far as um, the other stuff though, I just feel like Foolish Goods is a really solid card that you probably have to play because of the card um, the new spell cards ability to be able to tutor out a card from your deck into your hand 
and then other cards like Metal Force Fusion to just go along with cards like Foolish Goods. I think cards like Solemn Strike definitely are um, needed inside of the deck as well. Hippo Carnival is a really, really powerful card I feel like you need for the link. And then again, in case you didn't measure it out, each one of the, the synchros takes a different type of tuner. Getting into the actual combos, again guys, Hippo Carnival is a really powerful card in this deck, but the basics of this deck is that the link one any Nordic monster that you have is pretty much full combo. Now a card like Hippo Carnival can help you to not waste three cards out of your hand unless you're mixing in something like Metaphys. Hippo Carnival is a card that can help you get rid of three cards really easy, banishing up to three cards really easy to be able to spam cards out on your deck. So that's why you would have to play a card like this. Now that Evaldi card again is a card that can help you to tutor out any of the Nordic um, spell or trap cards and in this specific case Nordic Relic Svalin is pretty much a very new and type specific once per turn skill drain and then on your own turn it can be something else by helping you push forwards the acers being able to come out of your extra deck as well so there's there's something new to learn um, whether they're in the graveyard or the extra deck you're just going to be able to push them out onto the field as far as synchroing, you guys know how to synchro some. I don't think you're learning anything new, but this is just showing that one Nordic by itself equals this each and every time. Now, obviously you wanna open a card like Hippo Carnival because it can help you to not have to waste so many cards like in this specific scenario. And I wanted to show a card like why Eagle Booster is needed. So again, when you're going to try to push through on this effect, you are going to need a card like Eagle Booster inside of the deck. So this is why I am considering to play the card. There's probably something better. Again, like I said, the Metaphys stuff. I don't think Thunder Dragon is gonna be a good mix because yes, you're banishing cards, but then like you can't summon because you're locked into all of the Acer and Nordic stuff and you just can't summon the Thunder Dragon, but you can follow up and have really, really powerful cards in your hand. So I definitely think that considering something like the Metaphys stuff, it's just something that you wanna look into. If you don't open the Hippo Carnival, then guys, I'm telling you, this deck is going to get smacked by anything that is of competitive um, force, I guess, because you just have to burn three cards. Now, obviously, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, I do not believe that it's cost, so at least there's, there's that where you don't minus yourself three cards just to get smacked. But I definitely think it's something that you have to take into account and, and maybe find some other cards that can help you get three extra cards out onto the field so that you don't have to burn so many cards and then get smacked or just completely shut down and your turn gets shut down. Moving on into the next thing I wanted to talk about, I essentially just wanted to point out the, the easy way that you have to understand how to put cards out onto the field so that you can set up each and all of the synchros. As you see, each one takes a specific tuner to be able to set it up, as you see as the layout on the field. Guys, I don't know if this deck is gonna be super duper relevant. I do think it's gonna be relatively um, strong for the player base because older players probably love this deck. And I, for one, am, am interested to see when older decks come back into the fray because it pulls older players back into the game. And it's just all, in, all out and out cool to kind of see. I don't think this support is enough to make it matter, but it's definitely something to at least put it on the radar for people that enjoy playing it. I appreciate you for tuning in. I am out. Make sure you take it easy, brothers. Be safe out here. It's rough out here in these streets. And I'll see you next time. Pegasus out. Arrivederci.